Ah, tak for G'day, I'm Ash. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome yourselves to the Dev Server. As per usual, everything as subject to change. And, well, not final. This is for primary change log. Direct hit. Up, oh, there's a whole interesting whole host of things we're going to take a look at today. And I don't think everything is quite ready. There may be a second dev server down the line and we'll showcase everything, or at least the majority of content, in this video. Other than that, as I'm a pilot, first and foremost, let's take a look at the aircraft. A bug for the ME410, which you could install a 250 and a 500 bombs right away without modification research has been fixed. So sad. A B24 has had a preset with four 2000 pounders and added to the suspended weaponry. And lastly, a Russian bomber, the DB-3B, has had a torpedo added to its suspended weaponry. And a new shiny helicopter, which you can obtain via squadron research points. So if you're in a squadron and you want a free helicopter, this is definitely for you. This is the YAH-64. Now, it doesn't get air-to-air -air missiles, but it does get access to AGMs and Hellfires and all the other good stuff. So it certainly is a little fantastic. And for France and Germany, both Alouette 2 models have received a HD cockpit, as well as just looking magnificent. You've also got a decent co-pilot too. To top that off, all AH-1 variants, including American and Japanese variants, have received a new helicopter cockpit as well. And you're going to have to trust me when I say that the Mi-24D has a new cockpit, as I don't actually have access to that helicopter. Now they've got new game sounds because they can't fucking stop themselves from tweaking the sound every bloody update. Here's the vegan. To top that off, all the B-17 models have got their high-definition skins reworked. The B-17E, the e Late, and the, obviously, the 17G, and the wings do wobble, they've received animation physics, and obviously the Japanese one as well. Last but not least, the Heikel H-16 has received a cockpit as a part of the revenue share program, and, well... Even if, even if this is an obsolete change, it's nice to see not a, a placeholder cockpit. There is a new fantastic location based around, well, it's exactly the same as the April Fool's map, which we did the tank testing on earlier this year. They've turned it into a beautiful looking map, which, you know, is quite interesting indeed. But it's good to see them actually use some assets that they put development time into. This map is going to be interesting. Lots of open space and not a lot of cover. But we'll have a look at this map in a later date. There's an alternate history on Honolulu, which is an existing World War II map, which should be interesting, available for air battles. That'll be interesting to see. And there is a new testing range in which you can drive and test your vehicles in a better open terrain. The left of me right there is a cat point where you can rearm and reload shells. There are various areas for testing mobility and obviously, varied terrain which is nice to see than a standard uh, test drive that we have currently right let's get into some of the aircraft bloody fantastic another 104g this time for italy it's rank 6 but running 10.0 yep 10.0 still with <laughs> aim 9b's and uh, sits directly above the 104s it's probably the best starfighter in game Regardless, this is a nice addition. It does get access to Zoonies, and I'll just show you quickly what it has. It does get RWR, and obviously it gets the Zoonies. But it does get flares and chaffs. More on that later. France gets the F-8E. 
FE or the FN version. This is the French version of the Crusader, which is something that I have been heavily waiting for for a very long time. Sure, it doesn't get four missile uh, points, but the hard points, it does get access to mantras and those magics are certainly magic indeed. Obviously, you can also get the other different R5 330s, the E and the R550, uh, but it also comes with AIM-9Bs. Now, on the modifications tab, the most missiles you can take is AIM-9Bs times four. Don't know why you'd do that one. But there is quite a lot of options and quite a lot of versatility here. It's kind of disappointing it doesn't have a proper French naval camouflage. They've just stuck a couple of roundels on the side and called it a day. The only American jet to come is another version of the F-8. This is the E version. Similar to the French, except purely American. This thing gets access to M9Ds. That's it. That's really the only difference between the two vehicles. There might be slight improvements in avionics and several other things. It can uh, do bullpups, but my goodness, the amount of ordnance that this machine can carry is enormous. Just have a look at that list on screen right now. Definitely a interesting machine. I shall be looking forward to playing this one as well. For the low price of your sanity, you can purchase a Q5, although this time it's named the A5C. It's an attacker slash bomber with 23mm cannon. It's very identical to the Q5 line, except this is a Sudanese uh, Air Force Randalls. Does get access to AIM-9Ps though. So let's just strap those on and the mantra magics as well so this thing could be potentially lethal as something of which a high tier premium which sits well at 10.3 at rank six so there you go a new grinding vehicle for those who are fans of chinese aviation great britain gets the shackleton the mr mark ii and yeah battle rating of 6.0 for a vehicle that has been in the game files for many many years i can understand why you'd want that as i mean just look at the happy face that this thing uh, has on the front of it i don't think bombers and war thunder have really felt a need to be i guess that productive recently again it is uh, too little too late this could have been used and could have been useful three to four years ago but hey with a, a payload of 15 a thousand pound bombs two turrets one upper and one front with two Hispano mark fives it even can wing mount rockets these are the rp3s times eight uh four under each wing crew look like they're having an amazing time in the back there it's almost like a tea party in there with a crew of seven Coming in to be the only World War II aircraft that is unique in this patch, even excluding the other visual models for the B-17s, and even outclassing the Shackleton, this has been a heavily requested vehicle for a long time. It's a floaty boy, and it's a tech tree floaty boy at that. Since so the battle rating 1.7 has, is rank one, it's got 50 kilogram bombs times six, two turrets of 20 mils uh forward and aft and then a 13 millimeter machine gun on the top there with 300 rounds crew of five max speed of 283 this thing is probably going to be the best thing out of this upcoming patch direct hit or should i say direct shit russia gets a mig 27 m 11.0 rank 7 vehicle the 30 millimeter cannon directly under them basically just under the landing gear there what's unique about this vehicle is obviously it is a swing wing aircraft which is fantastic but the biggest draw card of this machine is probably its tv guided bombs yep those screens on the front uh, live cast an image to the cockpit and beam it directly in now it does have armor around the pilot 10 millimeters and then nine around the sides have a look at the x-ray real quick what kind of engine does it have? Yep, the R29B 300s. Typical standard stock selection of guided missiles. And you've got the S8 rockets as well as the R60s, which is fantastic. Hopefully, with a top speed of 2,358, this thing should be pretty fun. And I hope to see, uh, or at least see what this thing can do. Unfortunately, it is stuck behind a silly uh, point in the tech tree. The other MiG-23 is over here now. It's more of a jet fighter, or more of an interceptor. Why the MiG-27 is a jet fighter and directly below the Yak-28B, I have no clue. It is a premium Draken for all those who wanted a premium Draken. Essentially, this is against AIM-9s uh, and 30 mils, and yeah, there it is. Rank 6, 10.0, J-35A. 
premium bonus of 678% with a 795 silver line, the RB24s. Uh, no J variants, no nothing like that. So, oh, and it doesn't come with this camouflage stock either. It comes with this standard uh, Draken camouflage. Now, the probably the most anticipated aircraft of the whole entire patch, the JA-37, also known as the Vigan. Essentially, you get your standard Draken missiles, you shove them on these, and then you give it two radar-guided missiles, which are absolutely devastating. They're sky flashes. Not only does the radar also give you a one-kilometer lead marker when you're within a certain target range, but these missiles launch at 50 kilometers and have 30 Gs of turning power. Yeah. Even though it doesn't have countermeasures, I can tell you this machine probably won't need it for a little while at least. Although it is a little cl clumsy and can be quite cumbersome. This thing will be interesting to see and I'll need to do a further investigation on its use. Now, there was also a Japanese Phantom spotted, the Kai version, and that's really it for aircraft. All right, let's do quick fire round on the naval vessels. Right, for America, we have the USS Peterborough, for Germany, we have the M17 and the Karlsruhe, which is the premium. For Russia, we have the Smelly, uh, and then we have a big ass battleship, the Kamuna, I think that's how you pronounce it. Britain gets the Vega, a Irish ship, the Leora, which is a premium, the Fairmile LCS ship with a Valentine turret, and the HMS Norfolk. Now, Japan gets a U premium Yubari and an Aoba, and Italy gets a Gabino and a Leon. Is that quick enough for you? That's about as boring as I'm going to get. Right, onto the tanks. The T-80U gets an armor upgrade package, which looks like Babushka is going to get ready for grocery shopping and has put plastic bags on the side of the tank. America gets another Abrams, because why the hell not? Uh, this is the M1A1HC, rank 7, butter rating 10.7. I don't know anything about tanks. Let's move on to the next one. Germany gets another light tank based upon their Marta chassis. This is the 1A3. Gets a 20mm cannon and a 66mm grenade launcher, as well as a Milan 80 GM. I don't know how this differs from the other variant, but hey, it, there it is. Russia also gets a very confusing vehicle, which looks like a BMP, but a vehicle that could possibly be designed in the new game Sprocket. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a log, and it is amphibious, but this couldn't be really a Russian tank in all its dimensions. 125mm gun and... 2S25? Yeah, say that fucking six times over and get a tongue twister. My goodness me, you're going to gulag after that. This thing doesn't get thermals, but uh, it is a pretty nice looking vehicle. Ah, from the land of the Britain and the tea drinking boffins over there at the Vickers department. This is the Mark III, rank 5, but running 8.0. It's got 105 Royal Ordnance L7A1 couple of machine guns and is essentially an export vehicle with a rounded turret. I reckon this thing looks like a Centurion or is it trying to attempt to take on that success? Obviously it is very nice to see. Japan gets two new anti-airs in the form of American vehicles, the M16, the motor gun carriage, machine carriage, and you've also got the M19A1, basically the uh, the, the duster. And there you are. Don't need to cover these vehicles any further. There is a new uh, Type 74C, which is good to obviously see, haha. Uh, and then there is also a Type 87, which is possibly the cutest, most adorable thing I have seen this whole entire patch. Italy gets a C-13 T-90, which looks like a fat marder that has an orbital turret on the top. Essentially, it's got a 90mm Mark III cannon and a couple of other things. So this thing will be... China does actually get a vehicle, ZTZ-99-3. Uh, Unfortunately, its reload is so poor that it probably couldn't afford to buy a new version of its own self. It's actually a longer reload than its predecessor, the Z99-2. And these are basically almost the same variants of each other. And last but not least, Sweden gets possibly the most anticlimactic vehicle, a Panzer 38 with a 20mm on top. Ah, uh, ground forces. Rank 2, battle running 3.0 with uh, 450 rounds of, of cannon. There you go. Well, that's about it. Unless you want me to cover something particularly specific. Oh, uh, one last change to note. Uh, the game volume settings have been reset with the update to release values at which the game mix has been configured. Now, I don't know what kind of language that is, but essentially, when you launch a game, be warned. The music is incredibly loud. Thank you very much for watching today. My name is Ash. Thank you very much to my Patreon supporters and everybody else. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you in a Sprocket video probably soon. Or maybe 
Another Dev Sitter video. I don't know. I think I've covered everything. I think, maybe, I think. I, 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 see you later.